From the last census done in 2009, there were about 14 million indigenous cattle and about 3 million uh, exotic cattle. So looking at these numbers, it's very obvious that this play a crucial role in the livelihoods, providing milk, providing meat, and also as a source of you know, status and, and wealth for the families that are involved in livestock farming. We have two, two main types of, uh, of, of groups of cattle in Kenya. Those are the exotic and the indigenous. Both of them have their own pros and cons. The exotic uh, cattle are very high producers of milk and meat. Um, the, the indigenous cattle are able to survive under very harsh environments which have low feed uh, availability, high heat, high disease challenge and low water availability. Very well suited for that environment. But the downside to this indigenous cattle is poor productivity it means they don't give as much milk and they take longer to mature, they take longer to, to uh, have enough meat to be taken to the market. So what we were trying to figure out how best can we harness both of this, uh, this cattle to be able to increase food safety for the farmer. So one of the ways we are trying to address this is by building a sort of super cow, taking the best of both worlds, taking um, breeding a, a, an exotic cow with an indigenous cow, so getting the best attributes from this. And we use the technology called in vitro embryo production, essentially which is like test tube babies, but now we have test tube cows. So and using that technology, we are able to produce a calf which is is um, which which gains from both sides. It has higher milk production. It it grows faster. Gets to maturity faster at the same time if you took it to the arid areas it's better adapted to adapt to the, to the low feed availability low water availability and this is challenge award stands for African Women in Agricultural Research and Development. So this is a, a program specifically tailored for African women scientists. If you look at the statistics that we have, women constitute the majority of farmers in Africa, but that only one in four of the researchers that we have in agriculture is actually a woman. So the award is trying to address this gap by by training women, African women scientists. So what it does is it has a two-year fellowship program. It identifies key women scientists in, in over 10 countries in Africa. And then we'll take them through a series of training and mentorships. Your mentor is able to build you up to, to you know, advise you in science issues. And the board also has training such as the leadership training for women. A very key training in terms of being able to be assertive in the workplace, to be able to be more efficient as a woman scientist. And, and in the last years of the, the in existence a very clear you know results of the benefits that our board has had to, to women scientists in Africa.